Hi, this is David Yak, and in this video, we're going to walk through the Power Platform 2022 release notes for Wave 2. I'm going to cover some of my favorite items that will be released between October 2022 and March 2023. Let's get started. It's Power Apps Model Driven Teams Chat. So basically bringing Teams Chat into a model driven application on a record, being able to start team chats with anybody that's working on that same record without leaving the application. And that's a big theme that Microsoft has been on for a while now, bringing the capability to where users are in the app, making them not have to jump between apps just to do something, even if it comes from another application. In this case, bringing the Teams chat into the Power Apps model-driven application. Now, you'll be able to find all the chats on the right-hand side of the application, and chats are also tracked as chat activities in the timeline, which will make it good for historical review of the chats that have happened on a record. You'll see this coming to public preview in October of 2022 and general availability in March of 2023. Next up is Power Apps Custom Pages Responsive by Default. If you haven't built a custom page yet, custom pages bring to model-driven applications the ability to have Canvas and model-driven applications in a converged application. This kind of gives you the best of both worlds, especially when you need a real custom experience on your page layout. Well, with responsive by default, this allows your custom page to pick up like a model-driven application and be responsive as you resize the browser or move from different form factors, not have to worry about that as much in your application. This will start by choosing a selection of responsive layouts when you build the custom page, and then you'll be able to easily move controls between one responsive section and another. So this is a great feature addition, making it so that as you build your applications, including both model-driven assets and Canvas assets, users don't have to compromise when they hit one of the custom pages with the responsiveness of the application that they're used to in a model-driven application. This will be coming to public preview in October of 2022. Next up is Power Pages. There's so much going on with portals, I had to bring something in here that we could talk about and highlight it to you so make sure you knew what was going on. In case you've been living under a rock and have not been paying attention to the announcements in the past several months, Power Apps Portals has been rebranded as Power Pages. Yes, Microsoft loves their name changes, but all the same great underlying capabilities are there. It's just picking up the new name with some additional features. The biggest probably one that's coming in my mind is the Design Studio that is really targeted to provide a simplified experience for creating and customizing the website really modernizing some of the capabilities of the portal build at time customization experience. They've also integrated in with that the template hub, making it easier to pick up some of the predefined templates and apply them as you're starting your portal. Now, the key thing to realize is this is out there now where you can play with power pages that the new experience, but you can't update your old portals or your existing portals to Power Pages to be able to manage them in the new Design Studio yet. That will all happen at GA of Power Pages, which is currently targeted to October 2022. This is a great time, though, to jump in and build one using the new experience and give some feedback of what you like and don't like to Microsoft. Next up is Power Automate Editing Expressions. There's a new expression editor, and for many of you, you've already found this by turning it on in advanced settings and have been playing with it with the current version, even while it's been in public preview. Now, this will allow you to build multi-line expressions and add dynamic values without having to switch tabs, not trying to do as much gymnastics. It's there if you want to play with it by going to advanced settings and enabling it. But why I put it in here and it really caught my attention is because We've been waiting for it to really get a definitive target for when it's going to be generally available in the default experience. And they've now tagged that for March of 2023. So that gives us a little bit of an expectation of when it will land. Combined with editing expressions, they're also changing how dynamic values are picked. Again, making it more streamlined and easier to pick from the values in the list as well as they're also gonna be showing the data type of the tokens to make sure you don't try to use a value that's not appropriate for the data type that you're picking a value for. And this will also come in March of 2023. Both are some good solid additions that you can try out now by turning it on in advanced settings. Next up is in the Power Virtual Agent section of the release notes, and it's adding PowerFX expressions to the authoring experience of a chatbot. And this is really important in my mind because a couple of reasons. First, it basically continues the PowerFX story, which started as a 
language in Canvas applications. And Microsoft is committed to opening that up and using it across the Power Platform as the expression language of choice for doing authoring of more complex operations where you need an expression or a formula. Now, the other reason this is nice is because it gives a lot more power to the Power Virtual Agent authoring experience. I've always felt when I'm building a chatbot that I'm kind of in a little bit of a constrained editing environment that I have to do things. I don't have a lot of control over flow and data validation and things like this. And this adds the ability to use PowerFX to do things like data validation and, and looping logic, data manipulation, as well as performing operation on variables, really giving you a lot more power to the authoring experience in a chatbot. Now this is coming sooner than other things. You'll see a public preview of this in August of 2022, and it will release for general availability in November of 2022. In the Power BI section was using an SDK to enable quick creation. Well, what exactly is that? You might have used this if you've used, for example, a Dynamics 365 app or SharePoint list, and you quickly create a button to create a visualization for the current list of data that you're looking at. That's using the quick visualize option that they've built in using the Power BI capabilities that's being released now. So other developers can add that same capability to their own applications and allow users to jumpstart creating Power BI visualizations. Uh, this is really cool if you have some custom apps that you're building and you want to bring that Power BI in as a building block. This will be in public preview in October of 2022. Next up is in the Dataverse section of the release notes. And if you load any large amounts of data, this is worth paying attention to. Even if you're not a, a pro developer using the APIs, it's good to be aware that this exists. And this basically is around optimizing bulk operations, specifically around create, update, and upsert. Upsert, if you're not familiar with it, is when you're updating if it's there or inserting if it's not there. And this is really an attempt to bring some performance optimization to this. Now this doesn't affect the current create, update, or delete that's there. You can still use those and do them individually. This is where you're doing a bulk set. Maybe I want to create 10 account records or contacts at a time. I could use the create multiple. And this is also in addition to the other API patterns like execute multiple that it already exists. Now the nice thing about this is you can further optimize if you have logic running against the creator update or delete, you can create that logic to run on the create multiple directly, optimizing the experience, and this will provide the best experience for doing bulk data operations. This will be available in public preview in October of 2022 and general availability in January of 2023. Next up is automation of connection creation in a continuous integration, continuous deployment pipeline. If you've been following the application lifecycle management ALM story of the Power Platform, you know how critical it is for some of the pieces to be flushed out a little bit further. And this is one of the areas that's been a little bit of rough going for doing automated deployments. So it's great to see some focus on this and showing up in the release notes. Now, I'll be honest with you, it's a little short on details to really understand how easy it will be with what they're adding, but any effort to make so that you can automate the connection creation as part of the automated deployment is definitely welcome. And we'll look to see what, when that comes out in November of 2022 as in public preview to see how useful it is or if it needs some refinement before it really becomes useful. Next up is another one from the Dataverse section of the release notes, conditional plugin executions. If you're not familiar with plugins, they allow pro developers to create custom code that runs on events that happen in the platform, such as a create of a record, an update of a row, those types of operations. And this is important even if you're not a pro developer because today when your plugins run, they run unconditionally. So whenever a row is added, that your plugin logic is always executed. And even if you don't create the plugin, you may have had a developer create one that's used as part of your overall solution. So with conditional execution, the plugin only runs when a specified condition is met. Now you provide that condition at the time you register the plugin. So what this means once it's released is you'll want to review any plugin you have in your solution to see if it's eligible for adding that conditional execution to optimize your performance. This will be coming out in preview in December 2022 and general availability in January of 2023. Next up is the another Dataverse one, PowerFX business rule support. This one really I like because 
it enhances business rules. Business rules is a good concept. The idea that you can specify a rule, for example, some type of domain rule that says maybe a, the amount can't be over 50,000 when these conditions are true. Business rules m mean that you can do things without having to resort to pro code resources to create custom logic, but you can still have it run consistently regardless of where somebody is working with the data. And bringing PowerFX to it not only continues the PowerFX story that we talked about earlier, but also increases the power and capability of what you can do with business rules and further reduce the need to jump into custom code just to implement some consistent rules in your application. Now this will be coming soon in 20, September of 2022 as a preview and then general availability in November of 2022. Now the final one I wanted to highlight is actually a boomerang. It was actually scheduled for the last wave, wave one, but didn't make it and it got moved into this release. That happens sometimes to features, so it's always a good idea to follow the release notes and make sure the features you're interested in don't change or move out to the next release or get some. Now activity dropdown only showing relevant events is an interesting one that I've wanted for a long time because in the past, a model driven application, the new activity showed all the activities you had defined in Dataverse in that environment. And take, for example, the campaign response. I may be building an app that campaign response isn't relevant for. Wouldn't it be great if I could remove it from the list? And that's exactly what this feature is designed to do. Only show relevant activities to the model-driven application that the user is using at that time. This is now targeted for August of 2022 and general availability in October. Well, that's it for the ones that caught my eye. I recommend that you read or check out the full release notes and poke around and see what you find that's interesting. In fact, when you do find something that's interesting or if you've read them already, drop a note in the comments section of this video. Let me know what's your favorite Wave 2 feature.